Brian Windhorse in the building. Just got my second wind. Oh, I'm going to say that every time. I just want you to know I'm never going to let it go. All right. Um, we got some things to discuss, like involving the James family. Yes. So let's get this party started. Quick takes. Uh, okay, Wendy, Bronny James worked out at the NBA Combine yesterday. What were the key takeaways? It was a very, very good day for Bronny James yesterday. First off, he shot the three-pointer extraordinarily well, going 19 of 25 in this drill, which is a high-intensity drill. Remember, at USC, he shot the ball terribly from three. This was really big for the scouts to see. We're going to get to see him in scrimmages coming up. Secondly, he weighed in at 210. They didn't put uh, weights on the USC roster, but I think he was, a he was a little under 200. And if you looked at him, he's definitely added muscle, definitely been working hard, looked very good from a body standpoint. Now, the bad news is his official height without socks, six foot one and a half. He was listed at 6'3 at USC. I don't think anybody ever believed that. Um, doesn't mean, it, you know, he didn't come in at 5'5". Five five. It just means, you know, his wingspan did come in, I think, around 6'7". Won't stop him from doing anything. But you know, the size will always be an issue here. I think he's trending towards getting drafted. I think this was a terrific first day. Already the scouts are interested in seeing him play more. I also think they're interested in talking to him. Bronny has not been had any sort of public persona. The teams don't know him. They're going to go through these meetings. And tonight he is scheduled around 6'30 Central to have his first ever press conference. He's, LeBron had made the decision not to have him uh, to the media. We've never heard him take question and give answers before. That is scheduled tonight. So we are learning about Bronny and the teams are learning about Bronny by the day, but a very, very good start. All right. Uh, we'll keep it rolling with the James family. So LeBron, his wife Savannah, Rich Paul, sitting courtside at the Celtics-Cavs game last night. They watched as Jason Tatum put on a show and help lead the Seas to a win. Okay, this is where I need your help. All right? Everything's strategic <laughs> with LeBron James. That is James. an understatement. <laughs> All right? He's a brilliant businessman. Beyond uh, many other things as well. Do you feel like this is something or nothing that they were sitting courtside at this particular game in this particular moment? Okay, I've there. I've been there. I'm trying to get talked into it being nothing, but I can't 100% buy it. So okay. the, what this Who reminded, is this person trying to talk you into uh, it being nothing? Hold on. First thing is the first thing I thought about when I saw this happen was 10 years ago. So Druna Silgauskas's jersey retirement ceremony. It was in the middle of the season. LeBron left the Miami Heat, showed up there, and it was like, what? What is going on? By the way, they said that night it was nothing. Don't pay attention to it. Yeah. A few months later, something happened. Um, what I have been explained to is that LeBron and Savannah were in Akron over the weekend for Mother's Day to see LeBron's mom and Savannah's mom. This was not a special trip. They just decided to take in a game. And to that point, Rich Paul called the Lakers yesterday and said, just so you know, LeBron's going to be at the game tonight. We're not trying to surprise you. Okay. So I'm being told, no big deal, nothing. Right. Okay. But there's something. He, <laughs> he, he doesn't do anything for, 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 for nothing. He's always strategic, and he knows we we're going to talk about it on this show. He, in fact, one thing about LeBron, LeBron is always on time, Molly. If you want to, mm -hmm. the fastest way to upset LeBron is to be late. LeBron was fashionably late so that he could walk in. And, and the cameras get everything. So that he could get a big, giant ovation. He Maybe was, he just wanted to help Jason Tatum turn it around. Maybe he felt like if he sat court Don't you time. think the Celtics players were like, what is, what is going on here? No doubt. He sat across from their bench. Okay, so let me just real quick. There's four things I think that are going on in LeBron oh, world right now. Boy. And I'm going to dis... I don't think they're all in play. Okay, but let's go. One, the Lakers have a coaching search. I don't think LeBron is super interested in influencing that coaching search. I know that people think that he's doing all the levers. Right. He has always taken a step back from coaching searches because he knows he's going to get blamed either way. There are candidates over the years who have tried to get a hold of LeBron, mm -hmm. and he's like, I'm not talking to you. Okay? So I don't think that's it. Secondly, he is going to probably be a free agent and opt out of his contract. And I suppose everything is a negotiation. That said, I just don't see the Lakers not giving him the contract that he wants. I know they probably don't want to give him a three-year, $160 million deal. I just can't see at this point of his career this being a contract negotiation. So I could be wrong, but I'm going to put that aside. I do think that LeBron definitely wants to send the Lakers a message about improving the roster. Mm -hmm. Because we know at the trade deadline, he really wanted them to improve. They didn't improve. And now we come to the draft in a month. They have three tradable first-round picks. I think LeBron would like them to be aggressive 
at the deadline. And I think that part of his commentary, both at the end of that game in Denver where he didn't comment about his future and his comments on social media and in podcast sense, I don't know. I think that's a strategy play. And I think it doesn't hurt LeBron that we're now talking about this on first take because he came to the game. And then the fourth thing is Bronny. Okay. Now, Rich Paul has made it very clear, represents both guys, that we should not, in the media or the fans, connect Bronny and LeBron. But I thought that he, he said publicly that that was his, always his dream, that he, he could did. play with his son. Yeah, so why would year. I not connect that? Well, that's a fair point. But Rich has Rich, <laughs> Rich is, Rich is made it known that that is not, you shouldn't, you shouldn't, Molly, connect those two things. Okay. That, that Bronny is on his own journey. Having said that, the Lakers have two picks and LeBron came to a Cavs game. That's all I'm going to say. I'm done. Listen, LeBron's always been passive-aggressive with his approach <laughs> in season, <laughs> but especially off-season when he's no longer playing and other teams are. That's when LeBron goes into passive-aggressive mode. A lot of times it's through social media. I just look at this as a giant social media post. That's basically what he did. Rather than go on social media and say something – that would get your mind spinning. He decided to show up somewhere to get everybody talking about it. I will say this, two things. One, if he really is intent on trying to be in a situation where he can compete for a championship, the answer is go east, young man. Same thing I said about Kevin Durant. Go east. I think that's where the opportunities are. Cavs are like in the where east. Where east? Well, like be Philadelphia Cleveland? comes to mind. The Knicks come to mind. Cleveland. Somewhere, because here's the thing. People thought this year, well, as long as they don't run, Denver was the one team, man. They just couldn't play Denver. Well, I don't know about that. Minnesota is going to get better. Whether they're ready right now to take that leap, you would assume they're going to get better. So is Oklahoma City. So is Dallas. East would be the answer. And the second thing I will say is it would be inconceivable to me if Bronny ends up in the NBA on somebody's roster that LeBron James at some point isn't his teammate. Yeah. Doesn't necessarily mean right away. Yeah. Maybe he wants Bronny like, to go be Like, why not make it happen if you can? That would be incredible I, I, to I play with your son. I think the thing is LeBron wants Bronny to go somewhere that's going to develop him. Coming to the Lakers, Lake, who have the Lakers developed? Yeah. Well, there's a couple. Who? Alex Caruso. He and, and then uh, uh, Austin Austin Reeves. Oh These are undrafted guys who they developed. Yes, but uh, okay. What about Ingram? What about Lonzo Ball? What about D'Lo? What about Julius Randle? And what about all those words? number? All those number? Think about what you're saying. Think about what you're saying now. These are guys. Randy got real quiet, we, Shannon. Th those are guys. You don't have no expectations for a guy you're taking in the second round or an undrafted free agent. You talk about a first round pick. Those are the guys that you develop and turn into franchise and win you championships. I believe LeBron James probably signs a two and one. Plays two years. That last year, I can opt out, kind of like Ken Griffey Sr. and Jr. I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think Sr. was on the Rangers. He asked for his release so he can go play with his son in Seattle. I think that's more of an option than next year, LeBron James Jr. and Sr. playing on the same squad. Now, this is not unknown for me because I saw Tyrese Maxey at the game last night. The Mavericks and the OKC okay, right. Thunder. Front row. Front row. But he don't get the shine because he's not LeBron right. James. LeBron James, Carmelo Anthony's first playoff series. Who was in attendance, Wendy? Yeah, that was 21 years ago. But he, but y'all make it seem like he's never gone to a playoff game in which he wasn't in. And I'm just telling you, guys, do it now. Your now, other points were stronger. But, than that one. <laughs> but all the guys, but the other guys used to show up. Isaiah would go, but they would be out of the way. You didn't see them. Right. They're in the hallway. They're in the tunnel. They weren't front row and front center. But I, I don't think that LeBron James is interested in playing with Bronny this year or next year. I think he does a two-in-one. That option year, wherever Bronny is, that's where LeBron ends up. He could opt out of the contract, say, you know what? But Bron don't like turning down money, Wendy. So, historically, <laughs> so that is true. So, historically, ever since he took a little bit less money in Miami, yeah. yes. he, even though the state income tax, or lack thereof, might have made up for it, there is no negotiation with LeBron. It is max or nothing. Or nothing. Right. Yeah, as it so, should be. Yeah. So, any... He obviously could have a change of heart. I don't exactly know. I haven't had a chance to specifically ask him. But the fact that the Lakers can pay him the $160 million, right. or at least $50 million this year, the idea, if, if, if there's a concept of you getting LeBron for some discount, that's historically been a no-go. Exactly. So, could you so see the Lakers taking Bronny? I don't know. What's the, I, I, do you know I, what I their second-round pick is? 55th. 55th, okay. But 
this draft is very loose. Yeah. You will be able to acquire picks in this draft. Yeah. Yeah, it's um, not yeah. the strongest draft class. Yeah, yeah what I, I've I mean, been told. the thing I know about the guys that, that make a lot of money, they like it. And so for me to say John, to say LeBron James is going to have a John Q moment where he has a change of heart and take less money. But what if it's taking less money to be with your son? I'm going to be at my son, I'm going to be at my son in 2 years. I'm going to get this money first. Because LeBron looks Anything at it, can it's not my, it's years. not my job to be the general manager, take less money and me have to figure out how you guys make this work. That's your job. That's what you get paid for. I get paid to get on the floor, get these five guys and the other guys ready to play on a nightly basis. Now you want me to do that and figure out a way how you can stay up under the luxury tax and make sure you're not a repeater. LeBron said, nah, I ain't got no time he for He also that. doesn't want to hear about the 2030 first round pick. Yeah, he yeah, wants yeah. that gone. He yeah. wants he wants help now. Now he's trying he's trying to win because 2031, LeBron James is gonna probably be the owner right. of that Vegas team. Yeah, he's I, I had a I had a general manager who I super duper respect. Okay. I couldn't respect this general manager more. He sent me two things watching this game. One, he sent me my own meme back to me. <laughs> What's going on in Cleveland? He sent that back to me. He wasn't the only one. He also said his view, this is an inside fastball to the Lakers. That's it. Not, in, not an a, inside fastball how? You know, just, like, what's just, the message? Just apply a little pressure. Just, you know. Hey, I can't go back. Now, hey, y'all done see me. I will go back. I will spin the block. That's a term. Y'all guys might not know what spin the block means. Yeah, I know what it means. Yeah, bro. I'll spin the block it on you. Means. <laughs> Sometimes I do it twice. Okay, Lakers, make it right. He want, he's probably going to want that no trade. He can negotiate a no well, well, trade for if what you're doing. he opts. You could represent him. All the due respect to Rich Paul, <laughs> you could represent him. He's like, listen, max contract, no trade clause. Call me back when you have your answer. Shannon will do it. And my son. Right. Hey, man, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I'm a, and I've got a nice landing spot for Bronny. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right.